everybody. Welcome back to the high school game of the week. Duncan Armstrong along with Ralph Oakley. Ralph was saying just a little bit in the commercial, Ralph, uh, you have to throw out the record books in this, baby, because don't mean all that much. You either do or you die tonight. Yes, indeed. Uh, Duncan, again, the, the point we made at, at the start of the show, it's going to be a question of who can control the line of scrimmage. Princeton's certainly a bigger team. Their offensive line outweighs Be uh, Beckley, Woodrow, Wilson's defensive line by about 40 pounds on the average. Yet Beckley has that quickness, and that's one thing we'll have to look at. Defensively, they've, they've got Gray, who's one of the best sprinters in the state. They'll also see some offensive action. And then you look on the offensive side, Terry Nichols, uh, a real sprinter. So Princeton's going to have their hands full trying to contain the speed. Uh, Princeton on offense will try to wear them down. Princeton in the blue and white, the Flying Eagles in the maroon and white. Here's the kickoff from Wallace, and it is a good kick going deep. Gabriel will take it at the goal line. Up the middle, they'll come now, coming out to the left. A little work, running room, across the 20 to the 25, and finally draw it down at the 32-yard line. A beautiful run back by Gaither. I'll tell you what, Ralph, that play was made possible by number 22, Terry Nichols. He saw him cut to the middle and made a great block that enabled him to get an extra 10 yards to get to the left side and give him great field position. And I'll tell you what, Beckley loves to run the option. That's what we'll see here out of quarterback John Odell. As we mentioned, a hit pointer in practice two days ago. He will not play defense. They've got him starting on offense, but uh, he might be a little bit hobbled. In motion, so the Eagles... Here's a handoff up the middle, good for about seven yards, was Terry Nichols up to the 39-yard line. Again, the motion there by, or by the Flying Eagles, rather, up the middle, Nichols goes for seven yards. I tell you, Dallas Cooper, number 50, enabled him to go straight up the middle. Also, number 52, Bruce Bennett, who's an outstanding defensive lineman, blows off the ball. He blew off number 75, Eddie Nicewater, and that enabled him to pick up a few two or three extra yards. Second down and four. We'll check the starting lineups for you here in just a moment. Again, a quarterback is John Odell. Here's a handoff. Last man through with some running room. Nichols comes up across the 45 and out of bounds at midfield. So first down for Woodrow Wilson. Checking those starting lineups. First of all, for Woodrow Wilson across the front line. And then Steve Lofstetter. The front line, Dallas Hickman, Joe Dombey, Bruce Bennett, Dallas Cooper, and Kevin Farley. Joe Blankenship at the other end. Odell is a quarterback and in the backfield. Steve Gaither, Stephon Ross, and Terry Nichols. On the defensive line, Sean Hartwell, number 50, 75, Eddie Nice wanted Curtis Tilly and Jamie Marshall, Mark Howard, Chuck Autry, and the free safety is Richie Wilt, Alan Terry, and Charlie Casey are the linebackers. Here's a handoff up the middle. We have a fumble, and it appears that Princeton has it. The Tigers pick up the first turn turnover at the 47-yard line. Jamie Marshall on the recovery, and it looked, Duncan, like there was just a miscommunication. The running back was past Odell when he tried to hand it off, hit him in the hip, and Marshall gets the ball back for the Tigers. Checking the Princeton starting lineup across the front line, Alan Christian then, and Hardwell has moved to tackle. He'll be there along with Harmon. Jeff Ellis now at center, Eddie Nicewander, Roger Griffith, and Mark Wood. Richie Wolf at quarterback in the backfield, Ronald Stroop, Ely, and Wallace. And I tell you what, a little miscommunication. Jeff Ellis, you know, he's that brand new center. He's only played in a couple ball games in between Richie Wolf. He took off before he gave it to Richie Wolf, but Wolf recovered the fumble. So a loss of a half a yard. I'll play it'll be second and 11. So Princeton will try to get that squared away as into the game comes Henderson, checking the defensive lineup for the Eagles across the front line. Cooper, Stephon Ross, Joe Dombey, Joe Blankenship. At linebackers, Bennett, Nichols, and Gray in the backfield, we have Tommy Gerald, Steve Gaither, jo uh, Greg Robinson, and Tommy Moore starting. And we have a flag, again, as Princeton's having a hard time getting it going. I tell you, number 55, Dallas Cooper, just a little anxious on that. Even though it's the second play for him on defense, just kind of shot a little bit, and he jumps, so, you know, we'll give him five yards on the play. Up over center, Richie Wolf, 5'8", 160-pound senior. Second down, six yards to go. Here's a handoff up the middle, and with the room, down the Tigers, number 31, Jamie Ely. Ely gets it across the 40, down to the 38, where he'll have a first down. I tell you what, that penalty sure helped, Ralph, but he did some dancing on his own. He goes behind 75, Eddie Nicewander, and also 67, Roger Griffith. They are really blowing the Eagles off the ball on their first possession. They're going to their side and their beat. They like to go straight to Ely, and he goes straight up the middle, you know, for six extra yards. Beautiful run by Ely, first down for the Tigers. Both teams, when they've had the ball so far, were just two and a half minutes into the ball game and been able to move it. Woodrow Wilson, of course, lost it on a turnover. Here's a handoff, second man through it. Ely, this time not much running room. He spins forward down to the 36-yard line, and on the tackle was Andre Gray. They 
they say when Andre Gray really gets fired up for a football game, he can clean your clock. And this is a game he's really fired up to. He's a senior, you know, wants to go to the playoffs. He's an outstanding linebacker, and I tell you what, if he hits it, you'll know it. Here we go, second down, seven yards to go up the middle again. No running room that time for the Tigers. Maybe a pickup of one. I tell you what, Tony Wallace shut down on that left side by Stephen Ross and also number 55, Dallas Cooper. I tell you, the loss of Logan, I was talking to you know, the head coach, Carlos Soto, and he said the reason they lost to beat themselves, they just fumbled the football four different times. And anytime you do that, they fumble twice inside the 10 yard line. You can't do that if you want to win a football game. And it, it's Steve Gaither fumbled it, but I tell you, Gaither fumbled against Mountview on the first possession of the game. Two plays later, he goes 80 yards up the line. So it doesn't matter what they do, they seem to win all the time. Third down, seven yards to go. Here's a fake. The option pitch goes out on the left side to strip. He's got some room, and he's going to be very close to the first down. It looks like he's got it. It's Gray's in on the trick tackle. Once again, that option, you have to stay on top of it. It is a first down with the ball mark at the 28-yard line. Good run by Stroop. I tell you what, it was pursuit was led by number 22, Terry Nichols. He shot through on that right side, Rafael. You know, they alternate. Then it goes to the left side, and then Nichols will go to the right side, and they just shoot in. Also, you got to look for Bruce Beck. He is in there every single time. They average 10, 10 or 11 assists per ball game. Well, first and 10 for the Tigers as they move deeply into the Eagles territory. Head off up the middle of Zealy. He's got a little bit of room as he goes across the 25, down to the 24-yard line. Although the Tigers don't necessarily throw the ball a great deal, their offense hurt a little bit by the fact that Ron Smith was knocked out of last uh, week's ball game with an injured hip, and we saw him here on crutches tonight. We know he'd like to uh, be playing, but that does hurt the Tiger offense. Oh, you can't. When you get a dislocated hip, you, you automatically want to come back in spirit-wise, and if they make the playoffs, there's been some rumor floating around that he might come back, but I don't know. It's kind of iffy. You don't want to get a star player like that hurt. He was averaging 17 yards a catch. Second down, we'll call it eight. Looks like they're going to pass deep. We've got a man open. Touchdown for Princeton. Alan Christian, I tell you, he just, it, it also helped that number 21, Steve Gilson, gave their slip on the play route, and that enabled Christian to catch the football. Christian just took off the line of scrimmage, airing it out with Richie Wolf as you look at it on the replay. Christian was there to make the catch, and that makes it 6 0. And now, of course, the always interesting Princeton Tiger extra point, or in this case, maybe going for two. We'll have to see what they're going to do. Look for Strip to go in motion here. They snap it out to him. He's going to try to go right up behind the line, and he didn't make it. The center just pitches to Strip behind that line of blockers, and he wasn't able to make it. So that will leave it at 6 nothing with 7.21 to go here in the first quarter of play. We'll see if the Eagles can come back. Once again, kicking off will be Wallace. Deep as Gaither along with Gray. So an exciting start for Princeton, not the one that certainly Coach Kulisoto was looking for. But they'll see if they can move it this time. Wallace gets set to kick. Tigers up 6-0. And a good one first time. Here's another good deep kick. Gator goes back into the end zone, and he'll down it there, and they'll move it out to the 20-yard line. So Wallace kicking well so far, and the Flying Eagles will take over at their own 20. Most of the year, Ralph, the kicking game of Tony Wallace, he's put people back inside the five, and they come out no matter what. Most teams, Greenbrier, Easton did it, Mountview did it, and they normally start deep in their own territory because they either can fumble the football or they it's just a good pursuit of the Princeton uh, special teams that, that shut them down in their own territory. And that's why they win. They've really got some good special team players. First down and 10 at the 20. Odell still on the quarterback. Here's a handoff left side. Nowhere to go for Terry Nichols as Princeton with good containment there. They'll mark that one down for about a four-yard loss. I tell you what, number 29, Alan Christian, who just caught the football, and also number five, Chuck Autry, just wrapped him around the waist and forced him out of bounds. Of course, it stops the clock, but more importantly, he barely gets anything on the play. He had a loss of two yards, so good pursuit on that right side, because Autry is that free safety. Odell left hand at quarterback. We may see him go up in the air here in a minute. We'll see if that hip wonder is going to create a problem for him throwing. We don't think it should. Here's the pitch, right side, and great defense by Princeton, the initial hit. Number 42, Mark Wood, an outstanding hit. As soon as Nichols got that football, he was there. He read that play from start to finish. An excellent play by Princeton. i tell you, they're not going to the outside and then pitching it, because that hit pointer is really going to play into a nice ball game. A little shake it up, Odell. We'll see what he does this time. Left center breaks out wide to the left. 
Rolling left Odell, looking for a receiver, can't find anybody. Finally, he's going to throw it deep, and he's got a man, and it is just incomplete. Intended for Steve Gaither. Gaither had his man beat at midfield, the ball just on his fingertips. That was a good effort there. Odell took his time and went for it, waited for his man to get open, but it was just overthrown. Number 53, Joe Dombey, and also number 74, Dallas Hickman. On that side, he's got some really big beat. That's what enabled him because they had good blocking. They shut down Hartwell and Nice Wander, and that enabled Odell to roll to his left route. You know, he hit that southpaw, and he just lets it fly. And to handle the punting chores for the Eagles, number 11, Brian Hilton takes the snap. Here's the kick. It's going to be a short one. It'll hit about the 40. Gets a good bounce for the Eagles as it goes across midfield to the 45-yard line where it'll be down. Ends up being a 40-yard punt. Although it was a short one, it got the good roll. And again, the Tigers will take over in good field position, first and 10 on their own 45. First and 10 for the Tigers. Here's a handoff up the middle. It's Ely. He's got four yards up near midfield. And on the tackle was Bruce Bennett. He is a very big back, not a speedy, you know, 4'7 is not bad for a kid his size, but he has incredible leg motion and balance. And when you've got those two variables, you're going to be a good football player, and that's really what he is. He just goes straight ahead, he's not afraid to take the hit, and he's shedding out tacklers, as we just saw. Elia Sr., 6'2", 205. Christian breaks out wide to the right, he's on the board, for first and second down and six. Here's the option out to the side. The pitch is to Wallace. He's got the move down across the 40 to the 30. He may go with a beautiful tackle down across the 20-yard line, saving the touchdown, Tommy Moore. But Tommy Wallace got wide to the right, and only Moore stopped him from getting into the land of six. He has 555 yards on the ground. He averages 5.6 a carry, Ralph. He's so little. He's 5'7", 185, and he has a great burst of speed. And he got the block he needed from number 67, Roger Griffith, and he was almost into the land of six. The stadium, Flying Eagle Stadium, in his second year, just a gorgeous facility. As we mentioned, of course, uh, Woodrow Wilson in the playoffs in 84, losing to Bluefield. Of course, Bluefield went on to win the state last year, down here, but this year they're fighting for a spot. First down and 10 for Princeton. Up the middle goes Ely, he's going down to the left side to the five, and into the end zone for a touchdown. Ely across left tackle for the touchdown, an 18-yard run, and all of a sudden Princeton is up 12-0. Kevin Thompson went down yesterday with an injury. Sean Hartwell, 5'10", 230 pounds, just blew a hole open. He blew Dallas Cooper and Stephon Ross right off the football, right out of the line, and Ely just goes to the races, 19 yards. 53 seconds on that drive, three plays, so Princeton has been able to get the ball into the end zone very quickly. Once again, coming out for the extra point, Christian's out to the right, everybody else lined up over to the left. I'm not sure how you defense this. So just put the people on the line and try to control the flow. Well, if they don't send stupid motion, they may do what they did last time, but this is unique. They've got Christian wide out to the right. Autry is in, and they may. it looks like they may kick. They're going to pick it now. Here's the pitch. Autry's going to come around the right side. He's not going to make it. Good defense there by Woodrow Wilson. They pitched it back to Autry, who tried to come around the right side. Good play by Gray on the tackle, along with Gaither. So two extra points stop now. Our score was 444 to go here in the first quarter of play. It's Princeton 12, Woodrow Wilson 0. Again, Wallace has been a busy man running the football and then kicking it off after the touchdown's back on the field. He really gets that ball deep. Here's another kick. This one's going to be a little shorter onto the right side. It goes, gets for everybody. Gray let it go. Gaither let it go. And it goes in the end zone and they'll down it there. The shorter kick for Wallace, they weren't able to take advantage of it as a rule in the end zone. And Beckley will put it in play first and 10 on their own 20. Now wide to the left is Lostetter. In motion goes Gaither. Here's a handoff. Second man through with some running room up across the 26-yard line. I believe that was Stephon Ross. No, Ralph, sorry, number 22, Nichols. Curry Nichols, the eye back. You know, they've gone out of, they mix it up a little bit. They go out of the eye, they also go out of the option, which is they go right and they go left, and they, they've had some success with it, and now they're going to the eye. I think they want to take advantage of the Terry Nichols all-state sprinter speed. Pick up of about five yards there. We'll call it at the 26-yard line. Once again, in motion goes Gaither. Here's Nichols again, gets up across the 30 near the first down. Looks like he's made it, just got across the 30, and it should be a first down 
for Woodrow Wilson. Number and it is. Number 64, excuse me, Ralph, Charlie Casey made the initial hit and hung on. Then he got help from his linebacker partner, number 72, Alan Terry. Does have the first down, though. As I said, they're starting to go out of the eye. He's starting to mix real well. They found some kind of combination. John Henry comes out of the ball game. Ross Center comes back in, possibly shuttling plays with those gentlemen. First and ten, Swine Eagles trying to get something going. And off, first man through, and nowhere to go for Stephon Ross. Play almost looked like it was uh, kind of a broken play, as, as he, they moved much more quickly. Sean Harwell was right there at his spot at defensive tackle to hold it to basically no game. We, th we talked about control of the line of scrimmage. That's far as been person on both sides. Back to pass now, Odell looking on the right side. He's got a pass, and just out of the reach of Joe Blankenship. He went down trying to catch it and was unable to hold on. Mark Howard was in on the coverage, pass incomplete, and it's going to be third down and ten. I tell you, he had great pursuit. Number 38, Mark Howard, just shot through, Ralph, and almost took uh, John Odell down to the ground. It was just great pursuit, and the blockers, they just knocked him off the ball. Ross Center out wide to the left, third and ten. And off second man through, it was Nichols on a delay, and there's nowhere to go. 64, Ralph, I'm sorry. Charlie Casey just wraps him up in the backfield just as he was given the football. It was like a Christmas present, and Casey read that from start to finish and shut him down. Hilton back to kick his last kick was a 40-yarder. Good snap, good rush. Gets the ball away. It's a high but very short kick. It lands and again takes a good bounce for the Eagles. And it'll be down there by Robinson at the 38-yard line. So Princeton, without uh, quite as good field position this time, will nonetheless have it at the 38-yard line. And they've had the ball twice, they've scored twice, and Woodrow Wilson will see if they can stop them this time. First down and 10 from the 38-yard line. Here's a handoff. Healy left side this time. They were ready for him. In on the tackle. For Beckley, 53, Joe Dombey. Dombey in on the tackle. Beautiful play. It looked almost like the start of the same play that Ely scored on, but they were ready that time. Kevin Farley also went on the tackle. The front four of the Beckley Flying Eagles, 35 pounds different average as far as the Princeton Tigers offensive line. But they are shutting some down, and sometimes they're not. So inconsistent right now, but I tell you, you learn more as the game goes on. Second down, 10. And off up the middle with a lot of room as Trophy gets out to the right side, across midfield, cuts back in the middle, he has a blocker, he's going to go, possibly down to the 10 and tackle at the 5-yard line. In on the tackle, saving again is Gray, but Stroop cut across tackle, cut out to the right, and a big pickup down to the 5-yard line, Duncan Princeton's going to town. He had number 38, Mark Howard, out here in front, and Howard lined up as a wideout and just made a great block at number 23, Tommy Gerald. And Joe was completely taken out of the play. But the best thing that happened on that on that particular run was the cut that Stroop made. Stroop just made an outstanding cut route, cut to the outside, and was gone. I think he ran out of gas and got to the five-yard line. 56-yard pickup for Stroop, and I think that's exactly right. He did run out of gas, and he got into the end zone. So first and goal for Princeton. Handoff. Here's Wallace. Gets down to the four, and he'll be tackled by a host of Flying Eagles on the front line. Dombey and Rawson on that tackle. We'll call it a pickup of one. So, you know, Ralph, you got a minute 29 to go in the ball game, and uh, just something about this Princeton offense. They are going to town. You know, as I said, they're a first-half football team. More in the second quarter than they are in the first half, but I think they want to get these comfortable points on the board and then really start to set some people so everybody's healthy for the fourth quarter. Second down and goal from the four. Princeton showing a lot of offense so far in this game. There's a handoff up the middle down to the two-yard line. I believe that was Stroop on the run. For we'll give it a pickup of two. It'll be third and goal from the two. Clark County down 54 seconds to go in the first quarter of play. Princeton leads it 12-0. Kevin Farley, I tell you what, is really starting to knock some heads on that offensive line of Princeton. And he is just getting in to every tackle. Also number 52, Bruce Bennett, helping things out, Ralph. They are a completely different ball club right now. I think the scouts here in the box have found something on that Princeton offensive line, and they're starting to shut them down. But when you got those speedy tailbacks that allow them to get to the outside, it's just one quick block and you're gone. We're down and go as we put it back in play. 48 seconds to go in the first quarter. Princeton driving again. That quarterback, Richie Wolf, first touch down a beautiful throw from him to Christian. Here's a handoff. It's Wallace. He comes up the middle across the end zone line. Touchdown, Wallace, with his first touchdown, and that will make it 18-0. I tell you, 
tell you what, Ralph, this is a completely different football team from last week against Green Briar East. Even though they did win, they were very sluggish in offense. They were not crisp. This is a crisp football team. Great night for football. They're away from their fans, but it's like they brought the whole town of Princeton across the way, and they are just screaming Tigers. So, you know, the Tigers, 8-1, and one, they're going to go out of a regular huddle this time, Ralph. Let's see if they'll kick it. And is Autry. There's a snap. They're going to try to kick it. The kick is up. And it is, I believe, no good wide to the left. Princeton cannot buy an extra point or the two-point conversion tonight. So with 44 seconds to go, our score is 18-0. Second of all, we've got a chance. Of course, this is our last regular season game. If I could take this opportunity to thank so many people at the station who have worked in the high school game of the week series. Some of the people behind the scenes, Rick Stewart, who works with you in the video tape editing, Dan Kirk, who's doing our field camera work, and of course our operations manager, Todd Andrick, who's been handling the camera work up here in the booth. And of course, Coach Tony Calabro and Bill Armour, who have worked with us on the air, and Bill's working with us in staff tonight. Tom Wallace again to kick off. Here's another good kick deep. It'll be taken by Gaither at the four-yard line. Gaither's going to come up the left side, across the 10, the 20, to the 25, gets outside, has some room, up to the 40, and it'll be knocked down at the 40-yard line. Good return, and maybe that's what the Flying Eagles need, a little better field position to get started. So Gaither with a good return up to the 40. I tell you, number 14, Smith Lilly, the backup quarterback to Richie Wolf, made the initial stick, and when he stuck him, it kind of stymied him a little bit because he had great blocking on that left side, and if Lilly hadn't hit him, he was into the land of six. Clock County down, 34 seconds to go in the first quarter of play. Flying Eagles have been working against the wind. A little bit of a breeze out here tonight, about 55 degrees at the start of the game. And off left side, Gaper has some room up across midfield and down to, or excuse me, I should say the 45-yard line, up to the 47, a pickup of about seven yards. Good run there by Gaither as he came across the left side. And that is the end of the first quarter of play. Our score after one quarter of play. First and 18, we'll take a time out and be back in a moment on the Channel 6 WBBA High School Football Team of the Week. Four Eagles have the football, or Flying Eagles rather, have the football. Left side for the first down is Droopy. He's going to get loose and almost breaks away, but is going to be pulled down at the 39 yard line. Make that Nichols, rather, I should say. Terry Nichols, my apologies there. He really showed some sec second effort there and was almost able to break open for a touchdown. 39 yard line as the Flying Eagles try to get something going here as the second quarter gets underway. Handoff once again as Nichols left side. And he fights ahead for a couple down to the 35-yard line. They're using him exclusively. And on the tackle is Jamie Marshall. One thing, Ralph, as I pointed out just before the end of the first quarter, they're sending Lostetter out there, and they're isolating him on Mark Howard. Mark Howard, incidentally, the third leading tackler on the Princeton Ball Club. Chuck Autry also watching the passes. So that's two key men out of the play that leaves people on that right side to double up, and they're not getting the tackles that they should. Second down and seven. Odell handoff. Second man through. Or here's the pitch on rather right side. Gaither has some room. Comes across the 30 to the 28-yard line. Odell is slick as he takes me out there. Gaither with the pitch on the right hand side gets it down for the first down. So Wilson moving the ball for the first time tonight. Left hand side. Nichols again has some room. Gets up across the 20 and very close to the first down. Down around the 18-yard line. So they're starting to move the football. One thing I imagine Coach Tribuco might be concerned about is complacency. After a team got up 18-0, just short of the first down, it'll be second one. There's a handoff, last man through is Gray. He gets out to the right side, across the 10, down to the 7-yard line. In on the tackle was Mark Howard, but Gray with that speed just burst through the line, down inside the 10, and now they're knocking on the door for their first score here with 9.49 to go in the second quarter of play. He was already through the hole, I think, before most of the Princeton people bounced off their blockers to try and make the tackle. When they did that, they blinked and he was gone. Reviewing that scoring in the first quarter, 7.21 to go, 28-yard pass from Wolf to Christian, then at 4.44, an 18-yard run by Ely, and 44 seconds to go in the quarter, a two-yard run by Wallace. But now Beckley's moving the football, handoff goes to Nichols, and he's not going to go much of anywhere. That time, the Princeton line was up to the challenge, Sean Huswell in on the tackle. First or second down and goal at the six-yard line. Rostetter comes out wide to the right. In motion goes Gaither. Odell looking to pass, throws out left side, and it is complete for a touchdown. Lostetter did a super job. The ball a little bit behind him. He went down low to catch it. Odell with a good throw to keep it away from the defender. And now the Flying Eagles have gotten on the board with 8.50 to go in the second quarter.
quarter. Yeah. Dallas Cooper for the extra point. Try to snap is good. The kick is up, and it is good. So where Princeton was unable to succeed, the Flying Eagles were on the extra point. With 8.50 to go here in the second quarter, our score 18 to 7, Princeton on top. Cooper to handle the kickoff short. And he's hit a short kick down the middle. It looks like it's going to hit between players. Finally picked up, I believe. That is Stroop out on the right side. He's got the move. And up he goes to the 36-yard line. Stroop picks it up on the bounce, advances it to the 36 where the Tigers will put it in play. Steve Gaither just stayed on his knees and put his shoulder pads into the into the midsection of Stroop and just stopped him, even though he bounced off a couple tackles. Good stop by Steve Gaither. Otherwise, he was gone down the right side. First down and 10 from the 36. Here they try the option, but they're rather up the middle and there's nowhere to go. It's carrying the ball with Jamie Ely and he ran into the front line of Beckley. That he did. Number 45, Stephen Ross thought Richie Wolf had the football route and was ready to wrap him up like a Christmas present and throw him in the backfield because if they had gone for the option like you originally called, they'd have been dumped for a four or five yard loss, but Ely manages do his right strength just to get a couple of yards on the play. Second down and eight. He is a big kid. There's no question about that. There's a handoff. Wallace right side has some room up near midfield where he'll be knocked down, but he'll get the first down. Last man through was Ely. I believe that was Moore in on the tackle, but Wallace again with that quick speed gets the first down and Princeton's been successful with that play tonight, Duncan. They have exactly. It was Steve Gaither route that Tommy Moore is right behind him, but it was Steve Gaither who stood his ground, and Wallace went for the little head fake and couldn't do that head fake, and he just stood his ground like he should. And Clock counting down, 7.50 to go in the second quarter. Princeton on the move near midfield. There's a handoff. Ely up the middle gets across midfield down to the 45-yard line for a pickup of six. One of the things Princeton has done very well tonight is not make mistakes. No penalties, no turnovers to this point. Playing uh, almost a perfectly executed football game, certainly offensively. Second down and four. Here's a handoff up the middle. I believe that is number 22. Ronald Stroop gets out to the outside across the 40 down to the 36 for a first down. And Princeton picking up yardage in big chunks this evening. Same thing, Ralph. Same play over the right side. Jamie Ely was the first back through. They faked it to him. And I think a few people on the Beckley Flying Eagle defense saw that Ely was going to get it. They wrap him up and he makes a key block to give Stroop some more yardage. And he goes through. I tell you, number 29, Alan Christian, limping off the field. So his replacement, number 38, Mark Cowell, now into the ball game. So we'll see how bad the injury is to him. Maybe just a little knot in his leg. Of course, Christian got the uh, person on the board with that beautiful reception. Here's a handoff. Stroop right side. Has some running room down to the 30-yard line. So Stroop running hard. He's picked up quite a bit of yards tonight. That will be a pickup of six. Stroop so far, 81 yards on five carries. So that's just about an average of 16 yards a carry, which is uh, not too bad an average for a ball game. Second down and four. 6.29 now to go in the second quarter. Princeton's on the march. Looking for the pass. Down the middle. It is almost intercepted by Gaither. Wolf through that low. Gaither almost with the interception. I'm sure Beckley would have loved to have had that one. Smith Lilly now a wide receiver, Ralph. Number 14 in the ballgame. Splits out wide to the left. Here's a handoff. It's Wallace fighting ahead. Very, very close to the first down. And I think he's got it. And you have to give Wallace a credit there. He just kept his legs moving. And it looks like he's got the first down. You know, Ralph, he has tree stumps for legs. He's just moving and juking and jiving forward for yardage. And he's very, very close to the first down. They're going to bring out the chains. It looks as though and they're going to measure. But I tell you, that is great individual effort. That's determination. You can't teach that to a kid. Second quarter, first and up, 18-7. to seven. As we mentioned before, the winner will go on to the playoffs. The loser would have an outside shot, but an outside shot at best. Here's a handoff left side. Wallace looking for somewhere to go, but not this time. A loss of a yard in on the tackle. Joe Blankenship. And also number 45, Ralph. Uh, Stephen Ross and also number 33, Andre Gray on that linebacker position. Just came through the hole that was open, and he just wrapped him up just as soon as he got the football. Loss of two yards on the play. At center, Jeff Ellis, as we mentioned, he moved in at center. Hartwell over at uh, left tackle as Kevin Thompson was injured in practice a couple of weeks ago. Lions done a good job tonight. Back to pass is Wolf looking down the middle. He's got a man, and it is complete. Just short of the first down. Mark Wood, the 
but Martin Wood, I tell you, he caught it on his left side and spun around. Otherwise, he had extra yardage. He was looking right, Ralph, and I don't know how he turned his head back so quick just to catch it over those left shoulder pads. So it, it gives him third and three, you know, it's seven yards, about three yards short of the first down. So a big pickup on second down. Down and three. Let's see what they do with it. Well, hands it up the middle, and it looks like it's going to be a little bit short. I believe that was Ely on the carry. Stephen Ross, number 45, Ralph, the, the Eagles, who plays defensive line for him, he has got Richie Wolf's number. Every time he's gotten in the backfield, he's wrapped him up and thrown him to the ground. Got to watch, it might be rough, but I tell you, he is ready to meet the ball carrier in the backfield. But somehow, Ely and Wallace's troop are getting through first. But if they ever meet him, I tell you, it's going to be something. Woodrow Wilson stands on their feet, cheering their defense on, fourth down, and about a yard and a half to go. This could be a big play in this football game with four minutes to go, second quarter, and off up the middle, and it's going to be really, really close. I think they've got it, just right at the middle, so it'll be first and ten just outside the 15-yard line. Here's the option, we have a fumble, and it looks like Wallace was able to pick it up. Trying to pitch it out with Wolf, he was hit. As he tried to pitch it out, it was fumbled, but Wallace was out there and was able to fall on it. So a big break for the Tigers there. Really is, Rock. When things are going your way, things continue to go your way. The football bounces your way, and that, that it did. Because it wasn't a war eagle, or a, excuse me, a flying eagle within three yards of that without wrapping around Richie Wolf. Tony Wallace thought he was ready to go on the option play and just fell on the football. So it's a lot of four on the play. Second down and 14 from the 19. That's foot wide to the left is Howard. Here's Wolf. Handed off up the middle and nowhere to go. And we may have a fumble on the play. They're unpiling. This is a 13th play of the drive. By far the longest drive it's of the football a game. Too, Ralph. Down to 2.49 to go. This is a very important series for both clubs. Certainly Woodrow Wilson wouldn't want to get down again by three touchdowns. Woodrow Wilson could stop him. Could provide a lot of momentum for him. Third down and 14. Wolf, he's back to pass. Looking down the right side, he's got a man complete. Four incomplete riders that drops out of his Mark hand. Wood. Mark Wood with the intended receiver. <laughs> he, excuse me, Ralph. He caught the football and he just kind of slid out. Otherwise, he had him beat and he had six extra points. It might have been knocked out of his hands because it looked like he had possession for a moment. Was unable to hold it. A beautiful pass there by Wolf down the right side. Very similar to the connection he had. With Griffith, now we're, or with Christian, we're going to have a field goal attempt, Autry, a long one, it is up, and it is good, a beautiful kick by Autry, that is a 37-yard field goal, I don't think anybody expected that, as they lined it up quickly, so with 2.30 to go in the second quarter, our score, 21-7, to we'll take it down, I'll be back on the Channel 6 Game of the Week. Wallace again to kick off for the Tigers. Here's the kick. This one he didn't catch. It's going to be a tough one to handle. It's loose on the field. Finally picked up. We have it loose again. And it looks like it's going to belong to Woodrow Wilson, I think. It was Bruce Barnett. Yeah, Bruce Bennett picked Bennett, it up. Rather. It was popped out of the hands of Stephen Ross, and all of a sudden Bennett was there as he was popping to Alan Terry. And then Ralph Bennett alertly saw it. He was also got some help from number 53, his buddy Joseph Dombey, and he just caught the football and fell down, which is a smart thing to do with 2.25 to go. Too bad a field position, 28-yard line. They've got 2.25 to march down to the other end of the field. Well, on their last series, Ralph, when they did score, they really marked the football very well behind the running of Stephen Ross and also Terry Nichols and Andre Gray, also the speedy back, has seen some good time. Jeff Bowen for Princeton, a little shaken up on the play, but went off under his own power, so it appears just to be a little shaken up. First down and 10 now. In motion goes Gaither. Odell, rolling left, looking to pass. That's good protection. Now he's got a run left. Still looking. Pulls up the pass. The pass is knocked down and almost intercepted by the Tigers. The first man on that football was, uh, I believe, was believe Allen. Allen Terry. Number 72, Alan Terry, I'll tell you what, just, he had the play covered from the word go. Also, what made that possible and what forced Odell way out to the left side, Ralph number 56, Jamie Marshall, just made.
made sure he wasn't going to go anywhere, and it came off one person's hands. It was a good tip drill. Nonetheless, with the football, Woodrow Wilson, second down and 10. Fox stopped two away to go in the second quarter. They trail 21-7. Princeton three touchdowns and a field goal. And then, of course, Woodrow Wilson got on the board in this quarter. Back to pass Odell. Left side pass is overthrown. And then almost intercepted by Mark Wood on the far side. He had a man over there, but it was overthrown. Pass intended for Stephon Ross. Almost intercepted again by the Tigers. How the situation changes if they don't get a first down here on this third down attempt. They'd be forced probably to punt. Once again, Princeton could have pretty good field position uh, with a couple of minutes here to go in the first half. Back to pass, Odell, left side, got the pressure, throws it out there, has a man, and it's just out of his hands, pass intended there. Renatter, I believe, we'll have to check that number on the far side, there is number 82, Steve Westetter, just out of his hands, and now Woodrow Wilson will be forced to punt, and they certainly don't want to let Princeton back on the board before this half ends. I tell you what, Alan Christian had his number all the way. He backed off because Rostetter in previous games, Ralph, he goes off the line and he just runs down and then comes back about five yards, which opens big holes between the linebackers and everybody. Here's a good rush. The punt is off. It is a low one. Takes the kick at about the 45-yard line, and it's going to be down at the 41. So Princeton will get good field position there at the 41 with 150 to go here in the half. Right now, we'll take a timeout on high school game of the week. And then the second half kickoff after a timeout on the Channel 6 Game of the Week. Welcome back to Flying Eagle Stadium here in Beckley, West Virginia. I'm Ralph Oakley along with Duncan Armstrong. Our score at halftime, 21-7. Princeton leading this ball game. Of course, the winner goes on to the state playoffs. Duncan, the story of the game thus far, Princeton controlling the line of scrimmage. We said it before the game. Their offensive line outweighs the defensive line by some 35 to 40 pounds on the average. And that's been the difference today. Now, Ralph, I said at the very beginning of the first quarter when Princeton missed all those two point conversions it may be a key but so far it hasn't and a big thing here princeton has sat on the ball in the second half they've got to open it up because towards the end of the second quarter beckley really starting to gel looking at the statistics from the first half of action princeton leading 21 to 7 and of course they lead the statistics as well total yards for the tigers 217 yards versus only 80 for woodrow wilson beckley ran 18 plays there one of six passing 17 rushes for 74 yards Princeton 205 for 36 yards passing, 27 uh, rushes for 181 yards. Leading rushers, Troop in the ballgame, 8 rushes for 83 yards. Ely 10 for 55, Wallace 7 for 48. Uh, leading rushers for the Flying Eagles, Nicholas with 50 yards on 11 carries. Ether had 2 for 14, Gray 1 for 13. Nine first downs for Princeton and only 5 for Beckley. Time of possession, another big uh, difference here, 14 minutes for Princeton and 10 minutes for Woodrow Wilson from Beckley. So, a domination in the first half by Princeton. They lead it 21 to 7. They got on the board first, three touchdowns in the first quarter. They led 18 nothing at the end of the first quarter. Second quarter, it was the Flying Eagles getting on the scoreboard, making it 18 to 7. And then Chuck Autry with a 37 yard field goal for Princeton. That makes it 21 7. And now, as we get ready for the second half kickoff for the play by play, here's Duncan Armstrong. Thanks, Ralph. Big, 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 big. I don't think you can touch upon it enough. Stroop. No, Richard Stroop. Eight carries, 87 yards, something like that, Ralph. That's incredible. That's like almost a 16 yard average. He's done, he's done an incredible job. They are just running the football that is roster. He does have a brother that played last year, Richard Stroop, who did real well against uh, Bluefield last year. So, Dallas Cooper to do the kicking duties for uh, the Beckley Flying Eagles. And he hits a high wobbler. It'll go towards the side of Tony Wallace. And he's going to try and retrieve the football at his four-yard line. He does, but he will try and be smothered. And he's absolutely nailed by Stephen Ross at the 10-yard line. He wobbled that football just a little bit, Ralph. And I tell you, I don't know if he really wanted to take the football off that same starting backfield. Wolf is the quarterback. And they give it to the second man throw. They get the first man, Gene Ely, wrapped up. And I tell you, Ralph, the Beckley defense, they must have had some kind of a halftime talk because that's the best stance we've seen all game so far. And we are 11.34 into the third quarter, just barely into it. They lead 21-7. to That is Princeton. People thought Beckley may have a two-touchdown lead. But it's the Princeton Tigers that have come through and have shown they are a new crisp football team. They'll send number 14, Smith, really wide out to the right. He is the backup quarterback. They 
Tony Wallet with a good speed waited though until he had that opening, looked for it and then went, and that was the difference. And now Wallace, after his second touchdown of the night, will be kicking off for the Tigers as they lead by 20 points with 9 13 to go in the third quarter. What makes him so good, Ralph? He is built like a mini Mack truck. He's low to the ground, 185 pounds, but he's got that quick first step. And if you send somebody over the left side and then you go left, you've got the first step and a late enable you to get through the hole. And, you know, Walt has just over 100 yards rushing, nine carries, 105 yards. So, boy, I tell you, these backs are really coming through for the Princeton Tigers. Uh, totally different team from Yeah, me. if you look at it, you've got not only Walt with 105, you've got Ely and Tripp with right around 80 yards each. So that's 260 yards on the ground just in those three backs. They're well over their averages of six yards per carry. They're just doing a great job as Princeton gets ready to kick off. And, of course, Woodrow Wilson still not out of the football game. We want to stress that, but they need to get going here. You got Greg Gaither and Greg Rumson. And it's a line drive punt. It'll be downed inside the goal line by Steve Gaither. Wallace just booming the ball tonight. I mean, he really is booming. He's kicked the ball five or six different times, and he has nailed it, except for the one that got caught in the second quarter. They had a whistle apparently offside on the kick. He did boom that ball. It was about three yards deep in the end zone. He's put three into the end zone tonight, Ralph, so that one will negate it and move it five yards back. But uh, Tony Wallace missed it all purpose tonight. That's the first penalty for Princeton. Originally, he pointed. And now it's going to be against that's what I thought. He originally pointed toward Woodrow Wilson. So still not a penalty against Princeton tonight. The reason that that was called is because the moment the ball is, is kicked, that creates the penalty, I suppose. Uh, and they stop the play, so they'll move it up five yards. I would imagine Princeton really wouldn't have wanted to kick over again because I doubt that uh, Gator would have been able to either to run that back or run it back very far. Well, he's shaking up the three deep backs a lot because he can boom it. The kicking game has really come into contact tonight. You have Andre Gray left side. You have Steve Gator in the middle, and on his left, you have number seven, Greg Robinson, and both are very three speedy backs. And Wallace hits it. It'll go towards Steve Gaither. He'll take it at his nine-yard line. He's got some blockers. But here comes J.D. Marshall on the right side. He oversteps. Follow one player to go at the 33-yard line. He does it on his own, and we have a flag on the play. Here on the tackle for Princeton, Scott Puff, 5'8", 170-pound junior. As Gaither was looking for the side. Again, that penalty really worked against Princeton, even though the penalty was against Woodrow Wilson, that penalty worked against him because they got the ball to the 35, and I doubt uh, had that penalty not been called before. Woodrow Wilson basically took a five-yard penalty, and they picked up 30 yards in the process, so it turned out to be a good break for him. Handoff for the deep back, Andre Gray. Look at him go across the 50 down to the 40-yard line, so he's close to the first down. He does have a first down, Ralph. He just goes over the right side behind number 50, Dallas Cooper, and also the center, number 52, Bruce Bennett. He just does it on his own. It doesn't look like he really has a speed. It's just a long stride that he's getting. Plus, he's getting the hole. So that'll give it to you every time. Gray's only carried the ball a couple of times tonight. Both of them have been big gators. Out of a 12-yarder, one earlier in the first half, a 13-yard. High back is Terry Nichols. He gets the call right side. He'll be upended, but he gets a gain of three on the plate coming off the file for the Princeton Tigers, number five, Chuck Autry, and also number 75, Eddie Nicewander. So, Ralph, they pick up three or four on the play, make it second and six. Again, just right up the middle is the Blind Eagles trying to get the ball moving with 8.13 to go here in the third quarter. I would not be surprised to see Gray back in that football game. He, he's been the guy who's had the long gainers only a couple of times. I would not be surprised to see him get back in the football game. Well, they're alternating. If you remember, Nichols got a little shaken up. Gay, they're in motion in the first half, so Gray's done a great job, and they're going to go upstairs. He's got his man. It's a great catch, and I mean a great catch by number 80. That is Joe Blankenship, and looked as though he bobbled the ball, but he tucked it in just as he fell at the 16-yard line, so that's a pickup of a first down. He snuck around, excuse me, Doug, he snuck around the linebacker was wide open, and if Odell hadn't let him quite as much, he wouldn't have had to gone down to catch a football, and it would have been for a touchdown. A good throw, just a little, uh, let him too far. Blankenship made the right play, though, rather than worry about the touchdown, he made sure he made the reception. Quick huddle. They go to the eye back, which is Terry Nichols. Look at him dance in the 10. He's down to the 6-yard line. Number 5, Chuck Autry made a game-saving tackle. He was going to get inside the line that is a first down. So 7.29 to go, Ralph, and they're picking up some big yards, led by number 33, Andre Gray. They're going out of the eye formation, really paying off. 
I tell you what, give these kids credit. They've been down this whole football game, really, from the opening gun. And they have not given up. They were down 18 up and came back for a touchdown. Now they're down 27-7, their biggest deficit of the night. And they've come storming right back. Okay, they're in motion first and goal at the 7. Under Gray will be bumped at the 7-yard line at the line of scrimmage. He goes nowhere. It's the Princeton defensive line that does stop him. Great job there. I believe that was nice wander down in the pile. Along on that was Curtis Tilly, the defensive end. A good job by that Princeton defensive line. So it'll be second and goal inside the 10-yard line from the 7, 6.48 to go. Beckley on the mark. They're going to send Steve Lustad wide out to the right. He'll be guarded by number 38, Mark Howard. On the option, look at him go. He's going to keep it. John O'Dell at the 1-yard line. He fumbled. It will go back to the 4-yard line. He was popped. And the ball just went out of bounds at the 5. Ralph, he got inside the 5, and he was popped on the right side by 72, Alan Terry. And the ball went out of bounds. I... If he'd have been more towards the uh, goalpost, you know, halfway line, I'd say it would have been a fumble, but it went out of bounds. So I think Duncan, he might have been concerned. He could see that he had a shot at the corner of the end zone. Maybe had that ball a little bit loose, concerned about getting into the end zone. Terry popped him, and, uh, and that's what caused it to go loose. He had just uh, not holding it quite as, as closely as he should have. Maybe if he didn't have that hip pointer Wednesday in practice, he'd have dove and, you know, gotten the, the touchdown. Nevertheless, they're still in good shape with third down and goal to go from the 4, 6.30 to go in the third quarter. High back is Andre Gray. Gets the call right side. No, they're going to go on the option. And it is Steve Gaither. Touchdown, Beckley. Just short, I believe. They're going to call it short. He thought he was in. Chuck Audrey for the Princeton Tigers up into them at the two-yard line. Rafa, I thought he broke the plane as he dove across it. But Audrey wrapped his arms around him and grabbed him. And he didn't get across it. So it'll be third one from the one yard line give credit there to odell on the option as we talked about wolf waits in the last minute of the pitch on the touchdown to walk same case there odell waited until the guy was in the grass the all the to go down and he made the pitch and that made the play make it fourth and one terry nichols is the eye back and they give it to him he's over the top touchdown the beckham flying eagles with 550 to go john odell does not wait at all we got a flag on the play and terry nichols goes over the one-yard touchdown. We have a bunch of flags after the fact. Maybe uh, a little bit of an altercation. Uh, maybe a few tempers flaring there, but uh, a good play by Nichols. He chose to go over the top, which is a wise move. He needed to get in. But sportsman's like conduct here against Woodrow Wilson. And as you can hear from the reaction, the fans, Ralph, they don't like that yeah. call one bit. Of course, that, that penalty is after the fact, after the touchdown, so it will stand. So we're marking back on the kickoff, probably. As Dallas Cooper lines up, takes a few steps back. Bobble snap, they've done that all year. And they just cannot do it. Route number 11, Bruce Hilton didn't pull it down in time. And they've had problems with that all year. So the extra point will not stand. They set the penalty of unsportsmanlike conduct on the kickoff. So it'll be kicked off from the 25-yard line. Dallas Cooper has got a pretty good foot. All the way back, as you said, to the 25, so 15-yard penalty. And, of course, the problem with a play like that is Cooper may be not as strong a leg as Wallace, and odds are uh, the Princeton Tigers are going to come out of here with great field position. I'm still fascinated by that last time, the offside five-yard penalty against Woodrow Wilson ultimately got a much better field position than they would have had on the, on the uh, second kickoff. Also, the, uh, the late hit by Princeton gave him an extra 15, 20 yards. Gave him great field position at the 49-yard line, and they march in 323. Play covers 50 yards, so he got a touchdown. Dallas Cooper hits it over the left side. It'll go towards Chris Bailey. He bobbles it. He's going to go straight up the middle where he's got tons of Tigers, but he'll be brought down by number 23. He was in there before. That's Tommy Gerald for the Beckley Flying Eagles. So Beckley will be on defense. Princeton not too bad at field position. They'll take it about their 36 39-yard line. Good coverage there by the Flying Eagles. They got down in a hurry. Gerald in on the tackle. So, Princeton with good field position, but probably not uh, as good as we would have expected from having to kick back to the 25-yard line. Chris Bailey followed a little bit, Ralph, and I think that may have hurt them a little bit because they had the wall in the middle, but good pursuit by the Beckley special team. Same backfield as the start of the football game. And they give it to the first back through Jamie Ely, looking up dance for yardage. Get on the tackle there, Duncan, was, was Joey Lively, I believe, is in the football game. 
gain of four on the play. They'll mark it second and six with 5.17 to go in the third quarter. Duncan Ely did that all on his own. Uh, a good job by the front line of Flying Eagles. The Ely's just so strong. Keeps those legs moving. That's what a good back does. Is he keeps his legs moving at all times. It picks up whatever yardage is possible. Got to give also a lot of credit to the off-season weight program of the Tigers. It's outstanding. Led by Buster Lard, their weight coach. They give it a second back throw, which is Richard Ron Stroop. He gets three on the play, so it'll mark it second and about make that 32 on the play. So two yards to go for the first down with 442 to go. Of course, see, in this in this ball game, kind of several mini crises, really. Uh, this is another opportunity for Woodrow Wilson to stop them and get the ball back, maybe in good field position. With 427 to go. In the third quarter of play, it's going to be interesting to see what exactly will happen. But a big third down play. Smith Lilly wide out to the right. Richie Wolf going for the first down on the play. And it looks as though he's got it. He's at the 45 yard line, so it is a first down for the Tigers. They're picking up some key yardage, minimizing the mistakes, Ralph. From Jeff Ellis to Richie Wolf, and that's the second time he's picked up the first down. Ellis has done a good job tonight, as you recall, Duncan. Uh, first snap of the game, they had a problem. He's done a good job handling tonight, and, and the whole front line of the Tigers doing a good job blocking. Smith Lilly wide out to the right, nobody in motion. They give it to Tony Wallace. He'll be met by every single player on the defensive line of the Beckley Flying Eagles. He's lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. If they give him forward progress, he will have. Second down and 10 if he's lucky. I tell you what, Ralph, they expected him to go up the middle, and we didn't have that good of blocking from the Princeton Tigers, so he's wrapped up at no loss on the play. Daryl Henderson goes out of the ball game. Alan Christian will come in, and also number 42, Mark Wood. Christian will go wide out to the right. They give it to Tony Wallace. He's up into the get. At the line of scrimmage, they really are shutting down the run. They'll go give it to Ely. Ely again, nowhere. And Ralph, you called it. The linebackers are lining up just like short defensive linemen, and that is plugging up the hole. But well, one of the things where Princeton has been sluggish this year when they've had a problem with their running game is when they've gone, the defense has gone from a four-man line to what is effectively a six-man line and really jamming up the middle, and that's what Woodrow Wilson did well this time. Question to do the punting duty. He's really no one coming for Woodrow Wilson, and he nails up beauty. He'll be taken by Steve Gasser at his 11-yard line, but here come the Tigers. Number 68 for the Tigers, Barry Harmon, down on the tackle, just nails him, so he gets a gain of two on the play. So it'll be first and 10 at the 13-yard line. Super coverage there by Harmon. Just a wonderful, wonderful coverage. He's Their uh, defensive shutdown of Princeton that time will surely add confidence. Lots there wide out to the left. Gator will go in motion, and they'll give it to Terry Nichols. And we got a flag on the play. Looks like illegal motion by Gator, Ralph. It looked as though he took off a little too late and went the wrong way, so they'll mark it five yards back. John Bell's been really keeping the football as of late. The pitching out at the key moments. Lockstetter wide out to the right. And they just give it to the eye back. Andre Gray, he's at it. Five, almost jumped. But he does great yardage to get past to the line of scrimmage. And he's back to the original line, Ralph. So he gets five key yardage on his own. He did it. He almost was dumped in the backfield by number 42, Mark Wood. He did an excellent job. Just again kept those, those wheels rolling. Under a minute, 54 seconds to go. Gaither this time in motion, and he wants to go upstairs. He's looking for Lockstetter, but he had number 45, Stephen Ross, on the intended receiver. We got another flag on the play. The yellow starting to light the skies up, side of Stephen Ross. The eye back is Terry Nichols, and he goes in motion. And they pitch it out to Terry Nichols, who fumbles the football. Almost picked up by the Tigers, but the Tigers have recovered the football. Nichols could not get a handle on it, and they recover at the 10-yard line. Mark Wood on the recovery there. He was Johnny on the spot. Gator could not grab it. Wood did the, the wise thing for the Tigers. Really trying to pick it up and running, just fell right on it. And Wolf's going to pitch it out to Tony Wallace. He's across the 10, five, touchdown. Excellent run on the right side by Tony Wallace. They put six more points on the board. Wallace with his third touchdown, now with about 120 yards rushing. 
and certainly a, a real blow to the fate of the Eagles as we have a Princeton player down on the field. And they'll go to Scoop on the road first. They're going to go. For a touchdown. Washington has a high beauty. They're going to load Steve Gaker in five yard line. He's going to go right side where there is a wall. And you're looking at Dance across the 25 down to the 28 yard line. That is the end of the third quarter. Princeton has a commanding 22 point lead, 35 13. We'll take a time. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the high school game of the week. Duncan Armstrong along with Ralph Oakley. 10-yard run by Tony Wallace over the right side and a two-yard sort of crazy play that gives them a two-point conversion. They lead 35-13. Beckley is on the move. Gaither in motion. And Odell wants to go upstairs, and he wants Gaither, but great pursuit by Princeton. But look at the great keeping ability of John Odell as he picks up five yards on the play. He picks up five, Ralph, and just does it all on his own. You can see number 75, Eddie Nicewander, shake it up on the play, will go off on his own. And Odell has now come out of the football game limping a little bit, so apparently he's hurt that hip. And his replacement, as we talked about, will be Greg Robinson. This will be his first snap in a regular season game this year. So Odell has come to sit over on the bench. His, his hip is apparently hurting him. And now Robinson will play a quarterback. Robinson on the option. He'll pitch it to Terry Nichols. Oh, great play. Oh, an absolutely great play. It's on, coming on, number 12, Richie Wolf, the free safety route. He saw that play uh, developing, came right in from the safety position. Robinson didn't quite option that ball out as quickly. They had kind of lobbed it back, which gave Wolf time to come in and make the tackle. So Eagles stick with Robinson, a quarterback, lost that little wide out to the left. Gaither will go in motion. He's going to go upstairs. And he's being chased by Curtis Tilly. Curtis Tilly makes a bubble recovered by number 42, Mark Wood. Curtis Tilly did a great job on the left side, and he shook the ball loose from Greg Robinson, who is not taking a snap all year. That's his second snap, and Mark Wood falls on the football. Tilly showed some great speed. He was able to angle off. What Robinson was trying to do was get away, but then the fumble and Wood with his second recovery here in the last few minutes. On the march again, they're sticking with all their starters, except Daryl Henderson will line up as a tight end. He'll line up right next to number 67, Roger Griffin. The eye back is Tony Wallace. We got a fumble on the play. Richie Wolf couldn't handle the snap from Jeff Ellis. I think Wolf was able to fall back on the football, made the smart play, didn't try to pick it up, just fell on it. Yeah, and we also have a new quarterback, number 14, Smith Lilly. He backs up Richie Wolf, who's sitting on the sidelines. He's done an outstanding job tonight. I think he was a little bit shaken up, possibly, on that play. They give it to J.D. Ely straight away. He's close to the 20-yard line, so he got a gain of two on the play. You'll mark it third and ten with 10.01 to go. Mark would make a key fumble recovery, and he'll check into the ball game. Here comes Richie Wolf. He was a little shaken up on the play, right? Yeah, I think everybody hit him, obviously, with that loose ball. He was at the bottom of a rather large ball. I think just shaken up a little bit, but uh, obviously not seriously as he's back in the football game. So send Howard wide out to the left. He'll pitch it out, and look at Ronnie Scoop dance. He'll have another Tiger touchdown. An excellent run from the 20-yard line. A 20-yard run over the left side behind Barry Harmon and also Sean Hartwell, who moved to the left tackle position because Kevin Thompson went down to practice yesterday. Stroop with a beautiful, beautiful run as he, he hung tight on the sidelines and accelerated about the 15 to get in. We have a flag again after the play. So they'll line up at a regular odd. This time, Chuck Audrey splits the upright. So with 9.27 to go in the ballgame, Princeton 42 to 13. Now they get ready to kick off, but there was an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty against Flying Eagles. And it'll be Wallace, who doesn't need any help on the kickoff, kicking off from uh, about midfield or across midfield, actually. They've so. actually taken Tony Wallace out because they can move it. They put number five, Chuck Autry, in. I tell you, to score 42 points on the 18 in the state is incredible. Well, Autry just hits a high one. It's going to go deep into the end zone. Gaither and Gray just watch the ball at about five yards deep into the end zone. So it'll be a touchback first and ten for the... Beckley Flying Eagles are out to score 42 points on the uh, eight team in the state. Rod Settler out to the right. Now we got a new quarterback, number 11, Brian Hilton. He has not taken a snap all year, so we'll see what he can do. And he just gives it to Stephen Ross, and Ross is met hard as soon as he receives the football. He'll go back to the line of scrimmage. Good tackle there. 
By number 18, Curtis Tilley. Just wrapped them up, Ralph. And we'll start seeing some new ball players in, in a football game, I am sure, as, as we go along. His personality built in comfortable leagues. You know, they're still showing the same defense. Terry Nichols comes out of the ball game for the Beckley Flying Eagles. Andre Gray, number 33. Third and 100 meters in state. And this time, real different setup. They're going to send Gaither out to the right and also Lostetter. The slot back will be Gaither. The eye back will be Gray. And Hilton falls down, and he'll be down at the 11-yard line, Rob. He had all kinds of room to the right side, but he just slipped. It looks as though it's getting a little moist on that turf. I think one of the problems is when you're not used, certainly, to taking snaps as he spun to roll out to the right, just got caught up as he started his roll and was never able to regain his balance. Lost set of wide out to the right. The eye back is Gray, and he's going to go upstairs, and it caught. By number 45, Stephen Ross, but he'll get again lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage round, wrapped up by a host of Tigers. I thought he was going to overthrow the slew of linebackers in the pileup, but he didn't. He yeah, moved it, right into the pile. It looked like you were trying to set up something of a delayed screen pass there, but Stephon Ross got too close to his blockers, and they didn't really have time to set up the wall properly. It was a game, but not obviously as much as they wanted to. Fourth and 13, Hilton standing back on the five-yard line. Takes four steps. And he hits a nice little punt. It'll be taken by Chris Bailey at the 20, at almost midfield. They're looking up dancing to John, but you got good field coverage from Beckley as the Ryan Hilton gave him all kinds of time to get downfield. So again, they'll have great field position right at midfield. Uh, it's something the coach really likes to do is to give the guys on the bench a chance to play. And this uh, could pay dividends next year for the Tigers. Number 21, Willie Thompson wide out to the left. They give it straight ahead to Joe Pack and look at him dance a gain of about three or four yards. Make that Rodney Scott on the bunk carry. He's 6'1", 200 pound sophomore. So he's a huge back. Also, number 47, Joe Repass will check into the ball game. We're going to see a little bit of, of a lot of different running backs. We've got uh, Joe Pack, as you mentioned, Joe Repass in the quarterback. Smith Foley is now at the quarterback position. Uh, so you'll see a lot of different names and faces for for Princeton here in the last few minutes, and I'm sure you won't for Woodrow Wilson as well. Wilson. He really just gives it to Joe Repass, and he gets close to the line of scrimmage. He's about three yards shy, so they'll mark it third and about three to go for that first down, Ralph, but it's still a long way to go because you have those youngsters in. You want to give them a chance to take the football and gain experience. Exactly. Also in the football game now for the Tigers, Willie Thompson is going to be playing uh, wide receiver, number 21. He's a sophomore, 5'10", 145. And you also see all kinds of changes on the Beckley defense. Steve Park just came in the ball game. He's a 175 pound junior. Smith Lilly to give it to number 41. That's 40 Scott. Number 40, 40 Rodney Scott. Clock running down now, Duncan. 550 to play in this game. And we've got fourth down and two coming up. Of course, Princeton up 42 13. They will head into the playoffs in a couple of weeks. Big game for both teams. Princeton came out with the better tonight. They played a good football game. I don't really recall in, in a long time seeing uh, this kind of balance in the running backs and, and tremendous yardage picked up. Uh, two backs over 100 yards and then Ely very close with 93. Well, if you want to go up to date, Ralph, this is really the kind of balanced attack you want to have. And they just pitch it out. Number 21, Joe, make that 41, Joe Pack, and he falls on the football. Just a quick little pitch out from Smith Lilly, and he falls back on the football. So the Tigers will have to comp it up. So you, you still go with Hilton at quarterback. And he's going to go upstairs, and here comes Curtis Tilly. He gets away from Tilly and Nice Winder, and he overthrows the intended receivers, including number 80, that is Joe Blankenship. So, Ralph. He had the receivers, but there was a slew of Tigers there to make sure he wasn't going to go anywhere. I tell you, I give Hilton a lot of credit. He was able to get away from the rush. He had a very difficult pass to throw with the defense back. He got it close to Blankenship. It, it uh, touched off his hands, but a very savvy play. He had to force that ball in there because they have to move it forward, and he gave it a very, very good effort. Now, Hilton's coming out of the game, and I believe that we will have another new quarterback in the, in the ball game. We'll have to wait and see. We'll go with the coach's son, number 13, Vincent Melicerto. Coach Melicerto has a chance to now to see his son, and of course he could uh, pay dividends the next couple years. Carlos 
Lucero's going to keep the football. An excellent job by the sophomore. He's 6'3", 155 pounds. So, second and kick. He picked up five yards on the play. He'll make it third and five with 4.31 to go. It's interesting to look at him out there. Young man is a sophomore, stands 6'3", only weighs 155. I'm sure he's going to be in a weight program for the next couple of years. That's somebody you build on. Also checking in the ball game, number 20, Tommy Moore. He replaced... A couple of guys on defense did a good job. Three tackles on the night. He checks in and he will be the eye back. Make that he'll go in motion. And then you just give it to Terry Nichols. No, he wants to go opting it out. Nowhere to go as Princeton was there for that going, one. You know, Ralph, he really didn't go anywhere. It looked as though they were going to try and option it and maybe for an option halfback pass. So it'll be fourth and five. Right, you got number 20, Tommy Moore. Going in motion. And look at Carlos Soto rolling to his left. He's got the size, and he's got his man, number 81, down to the 30-yard line, and that is Hector Sawyers. So a good little call rolls on the left side, but we got a flag in the backfield. That are in is a split out, and they're going to send Tommy Moore in motion. Carlos Soto going to go upstairs again, and he's looking for him. He had his man. Oh, an excellent catch. It looks as though he had it, Ralph, but he fumbled the football on coverage, number one, Ricky Mitchell, the 5'7", 130-pound sophomore. Great coverage. God, it looked as though he was going to yank that ball in. Got to go upstairs again. Good protection this time, but here come the Tigers. They shut down the offensive line of the Eagles, and they're led by number 72, Alan Terry. Also 18, Curtis Tilly, number 50, Barry Harmon. Make that Sean Hartwell, so he had protection there for a while, but they're just too strong. Right, he could get a receiver open, and finally the pocket broke down. He had some time, but the pocket finally broke down, and the receivers didn't get open. Just inside, midfield, they're going to send back. They're going to send him in motion again, and he's going to go upstairs again. Not much of a rush this time, almost caught. The intended receiver, number 30, which is David Parker, and Parker bobbled the football. Good thing he did, otherwise he'd have been lost for fake yardage, so... It'll be 4th and 10 this time, 2-11 to go. Commanding 42-13 lead for the Tigers. They're not going to punt. They're going to stick with it. 4th and 22. Carlos Soto's going to go upstairs, and he's looking for Lofstetter. Almost a good attempt, but also good coverage by number one for the Princeton Tigers, Ricky Mitchell. Also covered number 41, Joe Pax. So things to build for the future. They cough up the football. It'll be 1st and 10, 44-yard line, 2-0-6 to go in the ballgame. Got another quarterback for the Princeton Tigers. Steve Terrier, a 5'10", 140-pound sophomore for the Tigers. So, Joe Tribuca opting not to go with Smith Lilly. They're going to go with this Steve Terry. And Terry just gives it straight away to number 40. Rodney Scott. Rodney Scott gets a gain of six on the play, so it'll be second and four with 156 to go. Clock just ticking away. And all kinds of people starting to see time. Number 67, Roger Griffin is the last starter into the ball game. He checks out. He's, he's had an outstanding series on that right side. I guess I Charlie Cates is going to come in and play a little bit of offense. A couple of other players coming in for Princess. One of the stories tonight, Duncan, uh, ended up being turnovers. Uh, five fumbles for Becky. They lost three in Princess fumble three times and lost none. And Terry got to get away with it. Just barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. A little bit of misdirection there. And I tell you what, Ralph, looked as though it was going to go to number 40, Rodney Scott. But luckily he just saw it and good, good thinking on his part just to get back to the line of scrimmage. Exactly. He just wanted to hand it off, wasn't able to. Rather take a last stab at it, held on to the football. More important to hold on to the football than take a chance. Just under one minute now to go in the, in the football game. Duncan and Princeton uh, is on their way. They will be 9-1. Beckley will be 7-3. Not much of a chance of getting to the playoffs. Total said Willie Thompson wide out to the right. Rodney Scott is the fullback. And the guy dances out close to the first down. Good second effort there by the Tigers. That was, I believe, number 30 man for, uh, ball game. Yeah, another new man. All kinds of faces checking in for the Tigers. Scott Green, the 5845 pound sophomore. So everybody you're seeing in the backfield for the Princeton Tigers are sophomores. They're starting to build good kids to build with because next year they lose a lot of so a lot of seniors. Last play of the game, probably 17 seconds to go. He just gives it to Rodney Scott, who was the fullback, close to the first down. It was fourth and one of 10 seconds to go. You probably won't have a measurement on that. The clock's ticking under. They do 
to stop the clock. They're going to see if we have a first down. Preston, a 42-13 lead. Yeah, that was uh, also, excuse me, Doug, it's Tony LaRue on the carry. Uh, it was very close. It looks like they're going to mark it up for a first down with nine seconds to go as the fans now start to put on their coats and, and head for the exits. Very happy, happy Princeton Tiger team. First time they've been in the playoffs since 1982. Three, two, the final score, 42 to 13. Who would have thought about this? And I'll tell you, we'll have some great comment from head coach Joe Trebuca when we return on the high school game of the week. Welcome back to Flying Eagle Field. I'm Ralph Oakley along with Duncan Armstrong, winning coach, coach Joe Trebuco. Coach? Uh, just an incredible victory for you tonight, 42 points. I was really impressed with your running backs. Uh, each one of them had a, almost 100 yards rushing. That seemed to be the key. You controlled the line of scrimmage. Well, we knew all week we had a controlled line of scrimmage. We haven't done it in the last two weeks, but like I've always said, you know, we, we play against good competition, great competition, and uh, Beckett's a great team, and, uh, you know, nothing to take away from Bluefield or East, but they were down this year, and our kids knew it, and uh, we had a rise to the occasion, and we did. How about on defense? You held uh, the Flying Eagles down to 145 yards rushing. Uh, anything different tonight uh, than you've done in the past? No, we played our basic defense. You know, we, we didn't change probably about what we did against Stonewall. So, uh, you know, there was no change. We just went after it a little bit, though. Okay, uh, looking for the playoffs. Tell us uh, what you plan for the next couple of weeks. Well, next week we'll probably just rest and lift a little bit and run and uh, find out who we're going to play. And, uh, you know, that's... That's the cake, and so uh, we'll just rest up and see if we're going to play and get ready. It's nice to see you smile on your face for a change. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long time. We deserve it, Dad. Coach, thank you very much. Congratulations. Good luck in the playoffs. Thanks. Coach George Trebuco, big win for them tonight. The final score, 42-13. Duncan, it was a good ball game. It sure was, Ralph. I tell you, we, we said they had to control the line of scrimmage, and they did. And that's exactly what they needed to do. Hey, they're in the state playoffs. First time since 82. There you go. Hope you enjoyed the ball game. For Duncan Armstrong, I'm Ralph Oakley. So long, everybody.